Did you know that the Gardener's Workshop offers online courses? Whether you're a gardener or a flower farmer, we cover it all, allowing you to increase your skills at your own pace. So check out our full list of courses today at thegardenersworkshop.com. The Gardener's Workshop, turning all thumbs green. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Field and Garden Podcast. It is your host and friend in flowers, Lisa Mason Ziegler. Super happy for you to be here today. I cannot wait for you to hear Tori's story. I loved going to her farm and looking around a little bit and seeing what's going on there. And, you know, Tori is another local flower farmer to me, less than like two miles away, right? And we just loved going to her farm. So I hope you enjoy this conversation and hearing about her journey. And folks, remember that this podcast is brought to you by the Gardener's Workshop Com. And that is home base to everything that we do. Um, over there, we have tons of resources as well as our fully stocked online garden shop, our online library full of online courses, which you'll hear Tori mention a couple of those, um, as well as you can connect with our other podcast, Seed Talk. And friends, there's just a lot of great stuff over there because we are committed to helping people grow cut flowers, whether it's in your backyard for your kitchen table or because you want to start a business or you want to expand your business. We have you covered and the Gardener's Workshop is home base to it all. So friends, let's take a listen to my chat and visit with Tori Anderson. So what a lovely urban farm, Tori, what a great job. Thanks. Um, so tell us, introduce yourself, tell us kind of, you know, a little bit about you and how you got involved in this flower farming business. Yeah, I'm Tori Anderson. Um, our farm is called the Flower Farm at Young's Mill. And um, my husband, Stephen, and my four kids, um, this is a family farm through and through. They help us in a lot of different ways, even down to selling um, to florists. So um, we started our first garden when we lived in Chesapeake a long time ago. Um, I don't know, maybe eight, 10 years ago. And it's kind of like most gardeners, you like get the bug and then you, your garden gets bigger the next year. And then we got introduced to chickens and that really just kind of like took us down this whole path of um, being outside and um, growing our garden and that sort of thing. Um, and so we turned our backyard into kind of like an urban farm. We lived in a traditional neighborhood and people thought we were crazy and our chickens were on the main road and we were chasing them and <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but when we moved here in 2020, we had no idea in Newport News. We didn't know what to do with our property. So I went down the route of master gardening and trying to figure out how we would use our property and um, COVID canceled that um, class. And so um, around that same time, my husband had knee surgery and was just YouTubing things and he was bored and came across flower farming. And I've always loved flowers, but that like flower farm, like where did flowers come from? Like I right. just had never crossed right. my mind. <laughs> um, and a lot of people don't know flower farmers, like local flower farmers. Who knew, Who right? Knew? <laughs> Who knew? Um, until you get into it and you're like, oh, there's so many, like there are other people who are growing flowers on a, on a bigger scale around. And um, and then we stumbled upon you and that you were so close to us. Um, and so we just started, you know, learning more about what, what you were up to, um, and all your courses. And so that just kind of launched us to where we're at now. And when was that, that you officially started? So 2021 was the first year that we planted, um, in the fall. And we did the whole winter dance, as I call it, of putting the row cover on, taking it off. But we planted our plants too late because we were just eager to like right. start. Um, and and I remember you saying, like, it's going to look like everything's dead out there. But, you know, just trust the process, like do all the things. And we did it. But it really was dead. Like we just started. <laughs> it didn't late. work that time. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. Um, so really, um, 2022, um, our early spring planting was like the first plants that we put in that we actually were able to harvest and like do something with. And I think the takeaway from that is, is my goodness, we have to screw up and have failures. Yes. Because yes. I mean, that really lays the groundwork yeah. for the future, right? Yeah. yeah. 
All right. So tell us how big your property is mm -hmm. and um, how I know that you lease some land mm -hmm. and then you have your home and then who you sell to, who's your, who's your target mm -hmm. market. So we live on an acre, but that includes our home, our driveway, which is large. We have a shed that we converted into the bouquet barn um, that we sell to customers out of and um, a deck and like, you know, just a normal home. So um, then we lease this property um, and it's an acre, but as you can see, it's not all being used. So I'd say like a half maybe total space, but that includes your walkways and all of that. Right. So we're, we're very much um, in the camp of trying to maximize our space. And so a lot of our like landscaping beds, like we've started putting things in that we can cut on and um, we're currently deconstructing our deck to make more space for um, plants and stuff like that. And so we're trying, trying to use what we have. Um, and as far as where I sell to our flowers, um, at the beginning of the week, we cut for florists and designers. Um, this is our probably second year that we've been doing that consistently. Um, and then at the end of the week, we um, sell to like retail customers. They'll come to the farm. Um, we've cast our net wide this year, which is, I don't recommend necessarily, um, <laughs> but we're testing all the different waters. Right. Um, so we are doing kind of like a subscription as well, mm -hmm. kind of testing that out. And so there's two different pickup times during the week. Um, and then from the local businesses. And then we also are doing a farmer's market on Saturdays. Well, you know, I think that I totally believe that we need to focus on our market once, but you have to know what your market is. Right. And there's only one way to find that out. Yes. And it's not like throwing spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks. Right. For me, it was like, finding out the easiest method with the most customers yes, <laughs> to yes. reach because that just makes the whole process yes. just so much. And it's a so, lifestyle. Like this is a lifestyle. Yes. And, um, I've, I've struggled with that because it does take up the majority of your time and um, I love it, but I have a family. And so that has been kind of the like testing of the waters, which one fits our family's lifestyle? What kind of culture are we trying to right. build? And we include them in a lot of things, but like some markets that we have been navigating are too taxing on our kids. And yeah. so trying to figure out um, which right. one works. So, yeah. And that's um, what I think I have so much respect. We have um, good friends, um, Jonathan and Megan Lease of Spring mm -hmm. Forth Farm. And they, like you, very mm -hmm. focused on their family mm -hmm. and they built their business around their family mm -hmm. instead of what most of us do, mm -hmm. where we go in hog wild and then just Say, come on, follow yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And it just, it, it really does change things. And, but I think it is totally possible. Oh yeah. And oh, I yeah. mean, it's like, I know as flower farmers, we think that our business is the hardest business in the world yeah. because we're growing the flowers. I've cut the flowers it's outside in the mm -hmm. heat, but being in a big entrepreneurial family, I have news. Every <laughs> business is, it is. It has its own. And the, the key piece is the leader of the business, mm -hmm. finding out what's important and focusing on that and forgetting, let the other stuff fall away so that you can make it part of your life. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know that you're um, big into education. Mm -hmm. um, and so tell us how your journey went. I know, I think we met, what was the first course you ever took? Was Yours, it basic? Flower farming school. So, yep. mm -hmm. so kind of tell us how that went for you. I mean, you know yeah. what, how you came upon it and mm -hmm. how it worked and then what that led you to go on to do. Well, so I think one of um, my husband's best friends growing up, his mother-in-law may have been one of your customers. I'm not sure. She knew about you. She And she, it's funny when people call your space your garden. Um, it's like, there's this really pretty garden. And it's, like, well, it's much more than a garden. Um, <laughs> right. It's funny how you get sensitive. And wildflowers don't even oh, be yes. calling our flowers wildflowers. I was like, they, no. do these look wild to you? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, she she had talked about you, and that's kind of what led us to finding you online. And um, it was around the time that you announced that you were going to stop selling commercially, and um, and that's when we learned about your courses. And so it was a no brainer. Like, what better way than to like to try to start this journey than to have someone kind of like hold your hand um, and really share a lot of the things that you've learned. Um, and so I signed up, and then had to wait. 
<laughs> which was hard. It's nice that it's on demand now. Um, but, but it was great. I loved the camaraderie and stuff that I had inside of the Facebook group and all of that. Um, and I still do, like I still go on and check, um, Isn't it helpful data. to be amongst people that are doing the same thing yes. as you? I mean, that's how I feel when I go to business conferences yes. and stuff. It's like other people you. that are facing the same craziness that nobody has any idea that's going on yeah. behind the scenes of a business. I yeah. mean, just to be able to say, I totally get it. I'm facing the very same yes. or yeah. 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 So I don't know if you told us this or somebody else, but we heard somewhere that, um, really early on, like to pick your person and to follow that person. Was that you? Um, I don't think so. No. And that's that, a good point, but yes, I, that, I don't just, think it was me. That has been so helpful to us in just the age of like, you can go online and find any information you want, but then this other person is saying something completely opposite of that. Yes. And yes. so we kind of just adopted that early on. We thought it was good advice. And so we've chosen you and we've did your flower farming school. And then, um, we also, we were looking last night, we, signed up for Ellen's two courses, um, the shorter course that mm -hmm. is for flower farmers. Um, but then I also signed up for her other course um, for florists. Right, growing your like locally. business with local sourcing, how florist yeah. designers can use and yes. meet up and hook up with and locals. I got into that course and as I'm like in the live sessions, I'm like, wait a second. I was like, I don't think this is for me. I think this is for people wanting to be florists and designers, but actually it, like has been so helpful because yeah. you're kind of putting yourself in their shoes and like these are the people that I'm going to be selling to better to know your customer yes. deep than yes. not know it all yes. right and some of the content that she recommended um like a book um flower confidential I read it every year I love that book of just understanding the history of the flower industry and um yeah. so I took those two courses and um, I did Val Shermer's, um, bulbs, the uh, bulbs one, um, after coming to your, um, open farm last year and meeting her. Um, so that's kind of in the works. I would like to do that. Yeah. Um, and then I also just did Dave's, um, no Dave's and Lenny's. I just signed up for Lenny's too. So we have Dave's Woody's perennials and more, and then, um, Lenny Larkin's new course. Well, as your business grows, things change, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially in your setting, I can definitely see you adding woodies and oh, yeah, things amongst your, where nothing else is really going to grow. Right. But I mean, and they're so in demand, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so you've just really kind of, I mean, I think that's the way we really recommend that people get educated. Yeah. Don't, I mean, I, you can certainly purchase all the courses at once, but yeah. going on the journey and like, digesting it and yes. doing the yes. work and then seeing, okay, now I need mm -hmm. to, I mean, I can totally see you expanding your fall and early yes. winter market with bulbs, yes. um, you yes. know, amaryllis and paper whites mm -hmm. for those established customers right. that you have. Um, so what was kind of the, your takeaway from the courses, just meaning how do you think that changed your journey of mm -hmm. being a flower farmer, being somebody that searches on YouTube and, yeah. you know, and it's so funny that, you know, our business is really unique of the model that I've made of my big business. Mm -hmm. There really is nowhere to go. No. And I do do a little bit of searching. And every time I search, I'm like, now is this person, what I, first thing I do is go to their page. It's like, or do, they, they are. do they really know what they're talking about? Have they done it? I mean, I'm amazed at the level of experts mm -hmm. that really have never run a business. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, yeah. I mean, or started a flower farm right. or run a big retail business. And, um, so what, um, do you feel like, how's that affected your journey? Yeah. Well, so with master gardening, they, they recommend like any, research that you're doing to put edu at the end of your search so that you know you're getting research backed yeah. information and that was so helpful to me yes but it's very similar with all the content that you put out and even your other instructors it's like you vetted them and you you know you're in alignment with the way that they do their business and how they grow and like all of those things and so um not only have you created like a community um, in your online courses, um, and then the Facebook groups that, you know, kind of go along with them, but you also like the information is all <clears throat> in alignment with each other. Like it stuff is built off of each other. And, um, I think the great thing ab about 
signing up for your courses is your online platform, like where um, you log in to get the content is it's when you made it searchable, like change the game. Because if I have a question about harvesting Lysianthus, like somebody in like maybe four years ago may have asked some like a specific question about harvesting Lysianthus, what stage or whatever. Right. And you can just go in the search box and type in harvest Lysianthus and it like pop pops yeah. in all these results and you still have to like read through it and stuff. Um, but then you learn other information. And right. so it's just like an ongoing um, database of information right. that I'm not having to do. Like you said, like, yeah. is this person know what they're talking about? Is that right? You, know? you don't have to go to the wider world. Mm -hmm. You can go to the people that, you know, the community that, you know, is and based it's, and it's quick. And yeah. I, and I can do it on my phone standing out here as I'm like getting ready to cut yeah. and, it's awesome. Um, I appreciate it so much. <laughs> well, and we appreciate you. And I just am so proud of everything that you've done. I mean, and you homeschool also, right? I did. I did. I oh. just finished my last year homeschooling. So okay. um, three of my kids will be in school next year. And then um, my littlest, who's three, is going to be at preschool twice a week. So. so you were pregnant when you started flower farming mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you like overcame, but I mean, that is the classic entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the person's like impossible. Poof, maybe yeah. for you, <laughs> I'll do it, you know, yeah, and yeah. just not even considering any rules. Yes, right. Yeah. And this one started um, from my mother-in-law's mother. Um, and so we've propagated them and we're adding them down the bank. And that's a whole nother project that we're working on. Yeah. I mean, hydrangeas are always good to have, right? Well, you, you said that it helped you. Um, it saved you many of, yes. many of seasons and it saved us this year. We call it the bouquet barn. Very similar to your members market that we do. Um, and so people come on Fridays um, who are our members, but they, um, we do a bouquet bar. We don't do like pre-made bouquets anymore. Okay. So we are emphasizing the experience of oh, coming here. Awesome. So yeah. 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 And so let's just lay the land for a minute. So we're in the city. So we have yeah. gardens packed everywhere. Everywhere. So this is, it looks like eucalyptus. Yes. What is this? This is also eucalyptus. It's lemon oh, something. Yes. It smells yes. like citronella, really. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so you have some annual beds mm -hmm. here. I see you have lots of delicious looking lemon oh, yes. um, basil. And yeah. then I've seen, I've walked around and I see sunflowers everywhere. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We took your advice, sticking them wherever we can. And this is our first year doing that. Last year, we just had them like all in the same bed and deer got us. Yeah. Um, and we do spray for deer, but this has really been nice to just fill in the area. Well, it's like once you start learning the, the pulling and put planting, it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I yeah. can put so much more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, we're so you have lots of wonderful annuals coming along. Yes. Yeah. And so what's the black tarp about? So our neighbors here, they're elderly and um, they have really started to notice more of what we're doing this year. I guess they've caught on. And so they've offered to let us start using some of their property to grow. So, and it's right outside of their kitchen window. So they, and they sit in their garage. So yeah. I'm going to do um, sunflowers here. We had a, um, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. We had a high schooler come who's been coming regularly. He emptied a trailer of compost yesterday for us and put it down. So awesome. Stephen was thrilled. <laughs> yeah. And so you have kids. Yep. Four kids. And so, so we have to have spaces for them. Right. Um, so here we have more sunflowers plugged in. So, so you have small individual gardens to fit your space. That's pretty yes. smart. Yeah. And we have to name them. Um, we have names for everything because I feel like it improves communication between my yeah. husband and I. Yeah. So this is garden two, which was um, direct seeded last fall. Um, and we've learned that we think the water is just running off on the ends of the bed. So um, we're trying to figure out what to do a little bit differently. Or that here. never ends. <laughs> so yes. we have more sunflowers, more sunflowers at different stages. Yes. We have basil. Yes. Um, and then, so back here, I see a bunch of bags. Bunch of bags. <laughs> they save us. So dahlias, yes. which I'm sure that you're finding a big demand for them because, yes. yeah. I mean, that's a crop that, you we could always sell commercially yes. and otherwise and you know i think you're smart because yeah 
that's a great end of the summer fall crop yes yeah um and so let's just talk about so over here the beds are all on the ground mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i see here that y'all have created some beds with frames on them is yeah. is that because of your water runoff or um and just to control the soil the soil is not super great so we wanted to have a little bit more control but also because of voles so we wanted to elevate them um last year we had planted dahlias and the voles got to all of them mm -hmm. so we did get two cats that have helped tremendously but we also raised the beds to kind of help right. with that as well. And so the plan is to install um, four more beds this way next year. It's a little bit each year, right? Yes. And yeah. so just for background, we have a goat and chickens, yep. even mm -hmm. though we're in the middle of the city. So that's just really awesome. <laughs> yeah. So we have dahlias here mm -hmm. and more annuals, Yes. more sunflowers. sunflowers. And so did you plant tubers or did you buy plugs mm -hmm. or did you start cuttings or? Uh, we did tubers. Um, a, a little of them were from last year, but we did have to buy a whole bunch this year. And Stephen, my husband, is actually um, doing cuttings and we can see that over there. Um, he's like, it's his little project. That's his, um, yeah. nothing like this getting his, the family involved. <laughs> yeah. And giving them ownership yes. to really get in on yes. it, right? Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, my Steve, so if you're, you have a Steve and I have a Steve. Yeah. My Steve is the equipment man. Yep. It's like he is all about keeping stuff running and helping and like, oh, I could do that with the tractor. You don't have to do it. Yep. Yeah. My Steve also does all the watering, which has been really great. That's awesome. Especially this time of year with the drought. So for those that may not um, know, tell us about what the bags are about. Well, they're prone to bugs. I mean, a lot of plants are, but um, the the bugs eat at the petals and then the flowers ruined. And so we just bag them um, as soon as they kind of get to the, whenever we see a bud, we're out of bags right now. So that's why some of them are um, not covered. Um, but it's it saved us. So when we go to harvest, we it's just a little insect nets up. is what they basically, basically are. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, they're very high. That's called insurance. That's right. <laughs> insurance. And there's different size bags you can get. They're just from Amazon. Um, so what? what is this? Is that a millet or a millet? Thank you. <laughs> it's like, what is this? Yeah, this is a limelight millet. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so it's coming. It's pretty. And this is, oh, your explosion, explosion. is beautiful. We, yeah, we really, love really love it. Yeah. Um, and that's a great height and that is just the perfect cutting stage right yes. there yes and really really nice we had a um a shortage of greenery last year so we really tried to up our game with greenery so um a lot of basil really anything green and then we planted mountain bent down the hill that we've been cutting on we'll see it out on work boulevard in three years yes yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's going everywhere but we've cut so much of it um already and i'm like are we gonna run out <laughs> so this is a beautiful sight to behold i must say just mm, this whole picture here of all your lush greenery now we're at the end of, we're coming hopefully to the end of a drought here uh, in yes, our city yes. and so tell steven good job yeah. on the watering <laughs> yeah. tasks yeah so tell us about what this is over here so like i had said we have to name everything because it just causes a lot of communication conflict but someone a customer named this the seedling stadium um so this is where we harden off all of our sunflowers um and i think there's some marigold and it looks like um, this cosmos. just lifts up yeah it just lifts up and so one thing that we realized was that um, how birds, smart is that birds were getting the oh, yeah. like seeds off of um the shell you know the shell of the sunflower seed and so we moved that up Oop. We moved, be careful, <laughs> we moved that up here, um, you know. Cardinals that. are the culprits in yes. our farm. Yes, and they're How beautiful, but. <laughs> smart is that? So I think yeah. that may now become a thing. I'm gonna have to yes. show it and talk about the yes. seedling stadium. stadium. In fact, we need that to get them off our carport, sister. Yes. And it's really, it's just, um, it's just a staircase that we had left I think over. I even have some old steps. That's what we did. So as you can tell, none of this is like Pinterest worthy. It's oh yeah it all is all of these all of these were used from that structure from yeah. last year we reuse everything <laughs> so and now we're looking down on the back side of your home yeah and we behind oh, we have some newly planted peonies yeah. it looks like 
Some are here and then some are back here, which we have to move them because the dahlia shaded them. We're going to have a peony patch. Next and year. then you've got mountain mint and it looks like bees. Yes, we have honeybees. Is this where your children also play? Um, a little bit. Our basement walks out there. Oh, okay. um, so this is actually um, our way of getting down to like our grow room and our um, oh. my office with my heat mat and all of that. So. And then I have like a soil, another name, soil station down there where we sift our soil and like fill trays and all that is down there. Okay, um, so let's um, that's our workspace. Let's head back. Let's walk up the sunflower. Okay. I mean, I love. This is why I have to be a flower farmer. <laughs> this is what I love. I know flowers just yes on the brink, and I mean if and that's why I'm a flower farmer. Yeah, <laughs> to be able to have that present in my garden all the time and, and cutting them is what does that right yeah they're beautiful. just keeps them coming we've we've had a hard time with sunflowers this year um they've been blooming but not been this big so we're really excited about this crop. this is in my opinion the, the perfect. most perfect size sunflower. So cute. between this and that yep mm -hmm. i mean people don't even recognize that as a sunflower i know yeah that's true but this i'm so excited for uh, this these big ones they're beautiful yeah Good job. Thanks. And these are new. Um, these are different. This is um, are they sunflower seeds. seeds. They yeah. aren't pollenless, so beware. I know, I know. But, but they're they are, they are the pretty. Van Gogh. Oh, and these must be sun fills. Yes. I'm still trying to figure those out. <laughs> that never ends. And this is purple sun fill, and that's yes. green. Mm hmm nice and so this is your little seedling bump up station Call or our plant port <laughs> plant port <laughs> yeah. everything has a this name is the junk um but yeah this is i mean you have to have a space like this on a farm you know all right so let's walk I back to show you this oh. i've been so excited to show you this this is the newest dimension oh is this the bucket yes this is our bucket washing station so of course i'm not gonna be able to get a bucket apart um but yeah these buckets they stack all the way across my friend um my friend's husband came over and did it and so then you um so we wash it and that's not a good bucket to show but we wash um wash them do all of that and then um we tip it with a soapy water in it and then it holds it and that's not a good bucket but then the water is draining out and then we spray it and so you're not last right. year you know we're doing oh this yeah the back thing. breaker this has been a game changer um all those buckets over there got washed yesterday by two high school boys i mean it, um, and it also awesome. makes it more interesting than yeah. just washing buckets for teenagers yes, right yeah yeah so awesome. it's been a game changer so awesome. we have a whole system of like dirty buckets here so they know what needs to be washed and then they and Put that's clean yes yeah that's okay. clean all right so let's um is that everything up here i think i think so yeah so we're gonna walk back to the other field yes what year is this um this is year three for me like selling season three i just want to tell you me in year three did not look <laughs> nearly this organized or well that's that's i mean that's because of you. Well, um, I mean, you, we talked about this before, like you doing your courses and um, putting all the information out there. And I remember last year, like on one of your lives, like posting about how often I access your content. Like it's just, it, it expedites, you know, what, what I'm able to do because you provide so much knowledge. And experience. Well, I appreciate that. We just tried to provide what I felt like I didn't have. So you lease this land. I lease this land. It already has water, which has been really wonderful. We've had to like, you know, do a few additions to like hook up the drip tape and all of that. Um, and then there's a gate that goes to the neighborhood. So we're able to like drive equipment into here. So oh, it's, nice. been, it's been super nice. We didn't know it was here. And now we're able to, you know, walk from home, which has been really helpful um, when you have kids and you're trying to right. grow. Business, so, so we have how much land do you think this is a quarter acre or half? I mean I don't think it's a half but I don't think it's a half I'd say between the two I know this entire plot is an acre right. but it like drops off 
um, all the way around. There's right. like a ditch. So um, you've really carved out beds. And so how long have you been farming on this land? This We had this from the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, this is this was kind of one of the things that when we found out about it, it kind of pushed us forward to go like, oh, oh yeah. I think we can do this. We do right, have space. Right. And honestly, this is more than one person can handle. Um, I've learned this yeah. year. And so um, you can do a lot in the space that we've already seen. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about it this morning as I was getting ready to come over and I thought, you know, I think the biggest challenge in domestic flower farming is not growing the flowers. It's not selling the flowers necessarily. It's keeping you focused, mm -hmm. not you, us, yeah, yeah, yeah. keeping you focused on growing what you need to grow for your market to make money, to make the bottom line, if that's your point right. of being in business, because right. it's so easy to grow other things yes. that really might not fit sun, right. those sunflowers, for instance. Right. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing yes. wrong with growing them. Yes. I'm just saying yes. you don't realize how much that takes your attention yeah. and your time. Well, and we like, there's certain flowers that I've already realized this year. I don't want to grow next year um, because of that. You know, it's like, yep. I think I need to scale back. We had somebody come out and do a story on us and, and I, they asked how many varieties of plants do I grow? And I counted and I, it was 50 and I was like, that's too much. Like, and then you <laughs> thought of Lenny's course that said 15. And we signed <laughs> up for it. And I listened to it shortly after that and was like, oh, Let's do something different here. So. And so you all use the biodegradable film in yes. this application. And we have the t tarps um, to kill weeds mm -hmm. and to maintain beds. And these, yeah, these beds are already made. And so last year, as you can see, weeds start growing up if you don't. Oh, yeah. Something, if you don't. Nothing holds quickly. the weeds back. No. You know, no. Nothing. Yeah, it'll still grow up in it sometimes. Right. But. So let's, I guess, walk over here. And I see you've got some Lysianthus yes. over there. So is this your first warm season tender annual yes. planting? Yes, this is. So cool. this bed over here, we call this the meadow. So this is meadow one and meadow two. Um, and this is where we fall planted and then early spring planted on the left. And then this awesome. is our first um, summer planting. Love your ping pong. I've never grown them. Is that what it's supposed to be? Oh yeah, like? wait until this, let them go. Don't okay. cut them. I know. I they will have balls like, oh, all over. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll keep them. They seem short, but. Well, they might get a taller. This, this area right here doesn't have a whole lot of nutrition. And so we're getting ready to cover crop this. Um, and, and so this was fall planted and now you're plugging in sunflowers. Spring. Yes. And then we're, we just last week cut back a bunch of plants because it just felt overwhelming and I yeah. had to clean up. And so this, I think we're going to fall plant this side. So a lot of yeah, that side. A lot of the reason why we laid things out this way is because of the sunlight and like we're surrounded by trees and then we have to have a place to get equipment in. And so right. this is like right. us maximizing the space that we have. And you know, that's something that affects where I plant cool flowers also is what gets the winter sun, the earliest yes. in the morning, yes. the latest in the afternoon, all of that plays a part. So yes. that's, that's really, really smart. So your Lysianthus is tall as ever. Are those yeah. ABCs? ABCs. Yeah. ABCs are the bomb Pink. for field growers. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. really recommend anybody starting first time with growing Lysianthus, definitely go with ABCs yeah. because they, they will grow tall in spite of you. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I think we grew them the first year and they did really well. We grew them at the house. And we didn't grow them last year. I can't remember why. But this year is, um, this has been phenomenal. And florists have loved them. Oh, yeah. It's Local really Lizzie sweeps them off their feet. The really interesting thing that I learned, one of my customers, she does mostly events like weddings and corporate events. And she was like, I don't like Lizzie's. And she bought several bunches this week. And she told me the reason was because these buds here, she cuts them off because she doesn't like them in arrangements. Yeah. And so... So the ones that had opened a whole lot more, like the white ones particularly, they didn't have many buds left. Those were the ones I sold her. And, yeah. you know, florists may not have wanted those because they wanted more light. Yeah. So that was really cool to figure out a you different You know, we kind of learned that too, that okay. we let, we let, we try to cut 
when there's four buds open. Yes, yes. And that's, I mean, blooms open. Yes. And it's hard if it's rainy weather, but yes. in this dry weather, yes, I mean, on to. the farm um, right now, our pinks are wide open. They're yes. so beautiful. Yeah, they are. But I agree with her. I think yeah. those buds are very distracting. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah so. Um, so you got more sunflowers plugged mm -hmm. in. You got lots of root. Oh my goodness, there's more. Oh, isn't it amazing what mowing can do as yes. far as neatening things I up? I used the, that like um, hedge trimmer. Hedge trimmer, <laughs> yeah. And plowed. This was status, and we just had enough of it. I was you like, reach a done. point <laughs> and you know I think that's something that flower farmers struggle with is it's like I get lots of questions how can I um, make snaps bloom longer right it's like we would never want to make snaps bloom longer no. because there's new flowers right. coming in yes and I think that we naturally crave seasonality yes you know what I mean yes. it's like we love that ebb and flow yeah and I think that I mean sorry <laughs> but I think that people that want us to have snaps all the time just want to do the same thing over and over. Right, They're right. not our people. They need to yeah. expand their palate. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yes. And so I am sure the native bees are. I know, especially you're like since the I've president gotten of their fan club. That's that's a lesson we've learned this year is we planted way too much rubecchia. Yeah. Um, and we also planted way too much sweet william. So like <laughs> this whole section was sweet william and then a whole another section back there. And it was just like, well. I guess we're not cutting yeah. all this. <laughs> Suzanne almost divorced me as her sister one year. I planted so much sweet William years ago. <laughs> I mean, we had 320 foot beds, yes. if you can imagine. It almost took her out. Yes. Um, yeah. And so Rebeccia, my analogy now is, is that yes, Rebeccia is incredibly, I mean, you can get 50 stems off of one plant. Yes. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So plant we plant less. enough for us to harvest and to leave half for the native bees. Yeah. So yeah, they do love them. Yeah. Yeah. And so here's more Lysianthus. Is yes. this also, a, did you plant all ABCs? Mm, that's a great question. I, for some reason, I don't think this one is. And I, I think this is probably think champagne something. Apricot something. Apricot. I yeah, don't know. Those are is. beautiful. Those are purple. Yeah. I, you know, they have white spots on them. I don't like that. Is well, that water? Yeah, it's water. And that's why some florists don't like Lysianthus because mm. they get it shipped in and it's been cut in maturely and yes. they just, they're flat. They don't, I mean, yeah. local, that's one crop that there is such an, I mean, it's like dahlias and lisianthus, yeah. that stuff, and bupleurum. Yes. Those crops that, think about them laying in a box, how yeah. smashed and yeah. not, not happy well, they are. Well, I delivered to a florist yesterday and the, he had ordered a ton of lisianthus for me and it was wild how I, I saw one of his designers um, designing with it and um, how different they looked. And he said, ours are better than the wholesaler, but I actually got to see the difference. And they were just like tall and spindly. And yeah, they're just nothing. What is yeah. this? Quinoa. Who? Quinoa. Brightest brilliance rainbow. So it's supposed to turn colorful. This is our first year that it's ever gotten to this point. And this would be a great competitor with Amaranth, yes. sister. And so that doesn't bugs, get right as buggy, perhaps. Yeah, it's we've really struggled to get it to this point. So you have to text process. me that name and what yeah, variety this is. I this will. is, I, uh, I mean, I that know. is really, Not really fine. cool. Did you fall plant this or no, it, it's no, warm? No, because it's with our oh, warm, this warm stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, I and, think in the past we planted, and it I bet it would early. pinch really well too. Yeah, it's got a lot of little branches coming up on the yeah. side. So watch your stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of landmines. Yeah. yeah, and your gumfrina looks great. Yep. I mean, everything just. We planted a lot less of it this year. We did learn our lesson with gumfrina from last year. <laughs> so let's walk down like here a little 50 bit. Fifty feet to last year, and was like that. I mean, look much. how tall the gumfrina is. I'm so, so proud of oh, you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's really fun. You have really just. I mean, for someone that just visits once a year, yes, yeah. potentially. Yes. I see. It's like watching a kid grow up, right? Aww. Like they look the same to you every day. <laughs> yes. But seeing them just periodically, it's like it's just amazing Aww. the leaps and bounds. Well, and thanks. I think your attitude of learning and investing in your business is just a big part of that. Straw flowers. Yes. Yeah, we we did really well with straw flower last year, but we found that customers like it more towards the fall. 
Yeah. So, like, and those are things you learn. It's a bouquet, isn't it? It's pretty, but like fall, it feels more like a right. fall flower. Um, so what I feel like for us, what we did was we did the same thing we do with zinnias. We only grow certain colors mm. early in the, the mm. hot pink, maybe the white, yes. you know, yes. and then save those great fall colors. And your Sunday, mm. I just love orange. Yes. The Japanese beetles. Uh, oh, they've obliviated our zinnias. Terrible. Yeah. I need You're to come out here. I was listening to a podcast um, delivering yesterday, and Dave Dowling said, you should go out and cut your um, cut your Cosmos every day. And I was like, Dave told me to cut my Cosmos every day, so I have to do that. <laughs> but that, I mean, it would make sense because you would catch them before those Japanese oh, yeah. beetles got them. Yeah, um, I mean, and these, they're more up. frequent cutting. Yes increases the quality of everything yes but it's not very practical it's not to do. It's and not. so that's why we did not grow cosmos when mm -hmm. we were in high production because of their neediness they are needy they're you know but they're worth it you know something i've been trying to find balance in lately is rest and this is when i come out and prune or if i were to come out once a day it's like it's different for everybody you have to figure out what your thing is but i I could see coming out and cutting Cosmos would just bring like one bucket with me as being restful. Yeah. Um, because you know. it's, you know. Well, and then and you know it's much. done. That's yeah. for me, knowing something is done. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of stuff this past weekend that like could have waited until Monday, but I rested more on Sunday right, because that done. stuff was done. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I, right. but those, that's an entrepreneurial <laughs> characteristic <laughs> yeah. that yeah. helps to, and I mean, it's like, having that drive and yes. figuring it out yes and doing it yes that's awesome yeah. so yeah. these look like your most recently planted beds yes these are um so it's it's funny because we've got four kids um, does that work nope um <laughs> we cannot find a way to mark our beds either so what i really like this year um i started using flagging tape on our netting and so before we have netting, we just use like wooden paint stir stick. So it's similar yeah. to what you use. So the dog steals those is the our flagging problem. flagging tape? Oh, yeah. no. no, no, the dog steals the sticks. Oh, well, my kids do too. So that doesn't work. But see, like right there, there's a stick. Yeah. And I'm going to have my daughter come out with flagging tape and a marker. And I use your garden marker because really permanent marker washes off. I don't oh, know yeah. any of those Cosmos what they are. I mean, I do when I look right, at them. But right, right. Um, we basically, once netting goes on a bed, we just have to transfer it up right. unless, unless we already have netting on a bed, right. then we can right. do it. But yeah, so we've had, um, we've had really good luck. We built a grid with like PVC pipe and netting similar to what y'all do with mm -hmm. your piece of netting, but we put it on PVC, um, to stretch it out for us. Yes. And so now I have a video I haven't posted, but it's, um, I have my son who's 10 and my daughter who's six. Um, they come out and help me. They have certain things they help me with each week. And so that's one of the things so we put them here. That's why it's in like a nice grid is we put that down. And um, one and of my kids. you put five puts, rows instead of four. That's smart. In one some of things. my kids does um, like the. Um, pokey. The pokey thing like opens the holes up. And then another kid is uh, breaking apart the soil blocks. And then I'm planting them in. Um, it's and it awesome. just, it's gone, it goes so fast and I'm spending time with them. Um, right. Oh yeah. So it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So and they so, helped plant a lot of these. My son was out here the other day with me and he was like, have we started cutting flowers from the ones that I planted? And I was like, not yet, but they're coming. <laughs> so, and I just love the dump trucks. You know, <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. We had to get a playground over there. Yeah. We try to make it fun for them because it is constant. Um, but what is this? That's Sweet Annie. Have you ever grown that? No. I think it's real sneezy. It has an interesting smell. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know how that goes. Yeah. I haven't ever grown it. We, it's, I like trying I'm afraid. new things, but I, there's a few things, and I've tried to plant very little of it just to see. Right. And then I've also still secession planted some of the new stuff because, like the quinoa, it's like we've... In, years previous like we've planted them too early and then it, we never get to harvest it right it, right know. so this is like a second planting of it just to see which one does and this better. looks like more millet yes. and the frosted explosion you know it's like i think that so many of us miss the boat on the succession you've really done a great job on that well it's nice too because like that 
frosted explosion over there is yeah. I have gotten a little bit behind on it and it's kind of it gets out of grown. control yeah, quick. And then it's like I feel okay like letting it go it out, um because I have more stuff coming and then like at the house there was more and so it helps because you know more yeah. is coming we well, have insurance it's yeah. like having a seatbelt on right yes, yes it's more zinnias need to be pinched Tell me about what you see for the future of your business and as you're getting so smart. I mean, I just see, I will say that I visited here, was it last year? It I think last it, year. it was last year. Mm -hmm. um, Tori provided the Billy Balls, Craspedia Blooms for my Cut Flower Handbook imaging mm -hmm. because we didn't have enough. And I came over for a visit and we just walked around and talked about stuff and I see just huge steps that you've made since then you know you've just upped your game and just yeah. pushed it even further so where are you going uh um we you know i feel like farming for us has been a lot of trial and error and um yeah we i feel like every year things get better which is encouraging like to see for ourselves that things get better every year um it's really hard like when something doesn't work out that you really hope to work out, like to overcome it and just be like, okay, next year, like, let's try again next year. Um, but we have just kind of put our head down and like tried to do that. And so we have certain beds at our house um, that we have been really disappointed in how the crops have turned out. Um, but I think what we're kind of pivoting to is doing more perennials and I don't know what those are yet. We already have a lot of hydrangeas. And so I'm, I'm going through Dave's class and I'm doing a lot of research trying to figure out what those look like, but I am excited about that opportunity of putting plants in that will just get better year after year, right. like pe uh, peonies, um, which we have some of those too, but, um, I, yeah, I'm excited about, you know, what that's going to look like and what we're going to learn from this class and, um, what we're going to be able to offer next year. And so what do you see in five years? I mean, do you, do you see, cause your children as they grow up are going to mm -hmm. be getting busier mm -hmm. and, um, you know, finding those markets that you can focus on and to claim as yours. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I can see you growing your members only market yeah. for the bouquet barn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and selling to florists. Those are yes. just two really yes. great uh, and bouquet subscriptions, which those three are what really you just floated our boat for yes. so many years. Yes. Um, and they kind of went hand in hand with each other. Yeah. And um, so is that kind of, so what do you see in five years? I mean, is that part of your thinking? You're in Steven's sh thinking? It should be. <laughs> I don't know if I've really thought five years. This, because we don't own this property, it's not guaranteed to us. And that's always made me really uncomfortable right. um, just with the situation. Like it just might, right. it's not like we have a choice to keep it long term. And so um, I, like, I would love to figure out like which crops are the most profitable and, um, and really focus on those so that maybe we don't have to grow as much of a variety, but I would really love to see us be able to float the business, um, on our own property. And then right. anything extra would be bonus. Um, bonus. Yeah. Like icing on the cake. And so like, that's a dream of mine. And we have a few things in the works for that. Um, you know, some other opportunities like with our neighbor's property, um, maybe one day being able to, to purchase that mm -hmm. and like, you know, just keep moving our gardens across, across the lane. Um, so yeah, just being able to expand in a way that like serves our family because I don't want to have a piece of land like that I have to drive to uh, and just, it's out of the question yeah. for us, even though we live in a city and like, it's not hard to get anywhere. I just don't, want to have to have also a shed there with extra equipment. And then yeah. I forgot something. And, um, so that's one thing, but I also would like, I would love to be able to have, um, employees and like, like to build kind of our own community, um, and not just do it alone. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for what that looks like. And, um, our kids help a lot and that's been fun. So like my oldest daughter, she's 12. I've always thought that she would have her own business one day, but she um, wanted me to take her to Michael's yesterday and she got little like chalkboard signs and she's crocheting these little stuffed animals that she wants to like sell at the farmer's market. And so I'm excited, like the next five years, yeah. I could see my kids kind of creating their own things. And it's fun to 
have built a culture in our family that like allows them to dream like we do and to like go after it. And so I don't know, it's big, it's bigger than just growing flowers. Yeah. Um, it it is very, very true. It is Mm -hmm. bigger than growing flowers. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just been a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Your crops look great. Thanks. And, um, keep them watered. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So I think that'll be a wrap. So thanks for letting us come at the crack of dawn on a hot day. And um, we appreciate it very much. Thank you.